So today is lecture three, data communication networking. Um, why do we need networking? If you think about um, the telephone system, okay? If you want to talk to uh, your friends, for example, if you have 10 friends, for example, and if you don't have network, you have to have a link from your house to your friend's house. So you have to have 10 links, okay, to 10 friends. And then if each of the friends of you, A, B, C, D, okay, if they also uh, are friends in the group, okay, so they have to have, A has to also have link to B, link to C, link to D, link to E, okay. So if you have like, um, you know, 4,000 um, 4, um, million people, billion people, okay, so what happened? Okay, in the world, okay. So what happened is that you have to have a lot of um, links, okay. It's not possible to do that, okay, to have links from every house to every house. But right now, what you can do is that when you dial, if you want to call um, to Bangkok, okay, so you dial 02. If you want to call to um, other province, you have a different prefix, okay, like 035, 034, for example. If you want to call to international um, others, countries, you can dial 001, for example, and then the country code. And so if you know the number of anyone in the world, you can call them. This is possible because we have networking. Okay. By have, having networking, okay, so we just sent our um, our telephone line, okay, into the network, and then the network we route or we send to the correct um, destination. Okay, the communications network that you may have heard, uh, maybe the wide area networks. Okay, this is for large area, like in um, province, okay, or other province um, regions, okay, um, like southeast. Um, maybe, maybe south of Thailand, or maybe um, the Northeast of Thailand, for example, we can have a network. Um, this one uses circuit switching, okay? Packet switching and ATM. We will talk about the circuit switching, packet switching, and ATM um, at the, you know, in, in many chapters, okay? Um, now, for a switching network, okay? The data are sent from point to point to reach the intended receiver only. So the connection will be like this. If you have um, this one, you have node, okay? And they are connected like this. So if you are sender A, you want to send to B, okay? What happens is that if you send your packet, okay, to this node and then to this node, or you can send to this node, or, or you can send to this node, okay? But um, so there are many, many routes um, to go to B. Okay, but it will send to, when it send to, uh, when it select this route, okay, to go this way, the node here, the other node will not see the data. This one, this one, and this one, it will not see the data. Only this node can see the data, okay? This is called switching. So receive from this line, and this one switched, switched network. Okay, so this one will switch out this line, okay, because, because there are many lines coming in and coming out, okay, but you have to select the correct line to go out. It's called switching network. Another type of network that you may have heard is the lo local area networks, okay, this is very popular, okay, the LAN network is for smaller area, maybe in like in Gazeta University or in, the, um, in some like buildings or in some small area, okay. This one will use broadcasting instead of switching pro approach, okay? So for the broadcasting, what you can do is that you can use like, like if it's Ethernet, okay? So you have bus, and then our computer, they connected to this bus. This is my computer, okay? So when this one transmit the, the data, okay, in, in the packet, it will send um, to the end of the line, okay? So everyone, that is connected to this link, we'll see it. This is called Ethernet. Okay? We'll see this data. However, only the one that is the intended, uh, this is address, 
okay so we have the the address okay so if this is the the one that you want to send to this one will read the data but the other will not read it okay so um, you can see that this is broadcasting this is broadcasting method but this one use switching method okay okay Um, if more than one sender okay, want to send at the same time, you will have collision because um, like A want to send and B also want to send, they send out in the same link okay, at the same time, they will collide. Okay, so we will have um, what we call a multi-access problem that we have to solve, okay, which we will learn about this in layer 3 of the OSI model that I will talk about in a little bit. Um, you may also have heard of wireless personal area network, okay, or the WPAN. This is I2P802.15 for a very short distance, okay, maybe a few meters around a person. So if I'm working here and um, I have an iPad, a computer, a printer, um, um, a scanner or something, okay, just around my, myself, okay, and it's wireless, okay, so communicate between personal devices. We can use um, Bluetooth or infrared, okay? Data association or the near field communications, okay? Or um, if you want, if it's smaller than the personal array network, okay? We also have the body array network, okay? Which we, you can search. Um, body array network. Okay? Body array network is like this. It's just on yourself, okay? You have some, some of it is implanted in yourself or some of it is attached to you. It's called variable. Va sorry, variable. So body area network is a new is a new network, okay? Body area network. So you have like variable or implant. Implant is like inside your, yourself, like um, implant in your head or implant in your skin, something like that, okay? And, okay, this is from the web, okay? So you have insulin pump, you have EKG, okay? This is, I just searched from Google, okay? Um, see, so you have, um, Everything like inside you, okay? Something is just, you just put it on yourself, like wear it, but something is implanted. Sorry. Okay. And you may have heard of like, okay, wireless network, internet work, okay? Um, this is uh, internet, okay? Internet come from internetworking, okay? Internetworking means that there are many, many net networks connect together. Um, so you have the, suppose you have a wire area network, okay? Connect through the router together and also connect to the local area network. So many, many different, oh sorry, many different networks that uh, use, you know, they are totally different, okay? Some may be wireless network, network some may be uh, wire network, okay? Some may be Ethernet, some may be uh, ATM, some may be um, star um, topology, maybe like um, Wi-Fi, something like that. They can connect together. Now, what is the protocol? I said um, the different network, they connect together, they can use different protocol. Protocol is a set of rules, okay? That governing the exchange of data between two entities. So if you have communications, uh, okay, between entities in different system, okay, you will need uh, the protocol. Entity is anything that you can send or receive information, okay? So applications that can send or receive information can, can be considered as an, an entity, okay? Um, the computer, the email facilities, okay, are also entity. What is a system? The system is phys physical, okay, object, okay? that contain one or more entities. So, so okay, so computer have many entities, as I, I just said. So entity is like smaller than system, okay? 
So computer should be system and uh, applications should be entity. Um, key element of protocol. What are key elements of a protocol? Syntax, semantics, and timing. Okay, the syntax is a data format and signal levels. So you have to tell like maybe you use um, 3.3 volt as a one, um, or you use 5 volt as a one. So you have to know okay the format and the signal level. So that when the receiver receive it, you know that oh this is this mean bit one or this mean bit zero. Semantic is the control information that you have to add like in the header to to tell okay but that ad address for example go to this go to that or or do this do that okay that is not the data. Um, timing is you have to sync okay uh, speed matching okay do the sequencing so. Um, Different protocol will have different kind of format and control information and different timing, um, you know, system. Okay. Now we will talk about protocol architecture. Okay, that we have heard about. Um, you ha you should have heard about. Okay. First one is TCP/IP. Transmission control protocol slash internet protocol. Okay, this one is the most widely used protocol suite. Uh, there are actually two protocols. Okay, that are used together, so we call it protocol suite. Uh, the second one is OSI, Open System Interconnection. This is a conceptual model. Okay, it was um, designed by the International Organization for Standardization or ISO. ISO. This one, okay, um, come out after the TCP IP has been used widely. So people keep using TCP IP, but OSI is the standard, okay, and it's the one that is um, maybe easy to understand. What I mean about the protocol or layer architecture is that um, when you look at TCP IP or, or um, OSI, they will divide the works into many layers, okay? If you think about layers, it's like this. If you have a, a black box, okay? Um, suppose you want to build a, a PC computer, okay? And inside you have main board. Um, in the main board, you will have the IC, right? So the one who make the the computer who, if you buy, I mean, you are a user, you buy the main board, okay? You don't have to know how the main board is built, okay? You just put it, um, combine them together with the power supply and stuff like that, okay? And RAM and everything and put it in the case and, and you have a computer, okay? But the one who, who built the main board, okay? They have to use um, like the IC, something like this, and the IC, they don't have to, to know how to do the IC, how to, be, how to construct the IC, okay? They just take it, okay, okay, take it and put it in the main board, okay? And um, the one who do the IC, who, be, who construct the IC, doesn't have to know how to make the computer or how to make the main board. So you see that the work or the, the text of communications, they are separated so that different layer of the, of the protocol has specific work to do and it doesn't have to know the work of the other layers okay so this is OSI model um, you have seven layers here this is um, have the network okay so in between the device A and device B are, are connected through a network that have two nodes um, this link has two nodes okay so you have when device A um, use some applications, okay, the data will go through the application layer, and it will go down to physical layer, session layer, transport layer, new network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. The physical layer will make it into uh, electromagnetic signals, okay, or the signal that can be transmitted. So uh, the physical, if you send to um, only one point-to-point uh, -point link, okay, not the network. The physical layer will just connect it to the right-hand side, okay, and doesn't have to go through the, the node in between. But if you send through the to a network and you have intermediate node, you can see that it will add the node inside of the network, okay? It will just read from the physical layer and go up to data link and network, okay, only that, and then go down again. 
because at the intermediate node inside of the network, it just want to know uh, where to route this data or this packet. Okay, so you just look at the go work on only up to the network layer, and then go down again, and then send to the the next node, and go up to the net network, and then go down again. Okay, until the end. Um, the device be at the destination, it will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? And then show up on the monitor for us from the application layer. This is similar, okay? Then we have the, at the intermediate node, there will be only, four, uh, only three layers, sender and receiver. Okay? This is more detailed, okay? When you have the, in, in terms of frame, okay? That was the, Earlier was the name of the layer, but this is um, how the frame was built up. Okay, so if you have the the data of the seven layer, which is application data, the seven layer will add the header. Okay, to to uh, provide the work that it have to do. Okay, so if you have header of layer seven, the orange one H seven, and then this will go down to the layer six. The layer six. This will be the data for layer six. The layer six will put um, another header, okay, of layer six to work, do, work, uh, do the work of layer six, and then go down to five, four, three, two. You can see that every layer will add header, but at um, layer two, okay, it add both header and tailor, okay. Sometimes it add both he header and tailor because um, it may use the tailor for the error correcting code, something like this, okay? Um, and then at the physical layer, it will change to, and okay, it's going to be um, 0, 1, 1, okay? Binary sequence with the header and change to the um, signal, okay, to transmit. When it transmit through the medium at the receiver, every layer will just um, take the header of that layer and then work on, okay, work, work on what it have to do and then take that header out, okay, and then send the data up to the next layer until you go, go to the application layer and the data of the application layer go to the user. This is, these are some function of each layer, okay. Um, Physical layer, we use a physical transmission medium, okay? Like the use of physical transmission medium, with what kind of medium? Is this air or is this um, coaxial cable or um, twisted pair, something like that? This one will transmit robots, okay? And it have to have interface on the mechanical, electrical, procedural, procedural uh, interface, okay? Um, this, will, this layer will be covered in this class. The second layer is data link layer, okay? This one is like, they will group the bits into frames, okay? As I have shown you uh, in earlier uh, tip, okay? We have the, they will do the error control and flow control, okay? And it will ensure um, proper sequencing of correctly received bit per frames, okay? So this is the work of the data link layer. For the network layer, again, cover in this class, we will do the um, routing of packets, okay? That's why when you go to intermediate node, the, you have to, the packet have to go out to the network layer so that the node will know which way to send, okay? Routing of packets and congestion control, okay? Also do the congestion control when a lot of people are sending into the network, what, what should it do, okay? They also do the multiplexing, which means that multiplexing is like you combine data from many users together and sent on the same line, on the same channel. In the connection between different networks, okay? Um, transport layer is a little bit covered in this class, okay? It's end-to-end -end reliable data transfer. Uh, some, okay, some of the transport layer protocol is not, not uh, reliable data transfer, okay? Like UDP, but uh, usually for the TCP, okay? It's a reliable data transfer. Uh, five to seven layers, they are mostly in um, computer engineering, okay? The essential layer is um, synchronization, checkpoint, okay, dialog control. Uh, presentation layer is handle compatibility of different character codes and data structure. Like sometimes you have to change to Unicode or Thai language or uh, what font, you know, something like that. And also encryption and 
um, and compression is done in the presentation layer. Application layer will enable users to access the network, okay? Um, and they have the user interface, okay, provide the service. Now let's compare the OSI model with the TCP IP, okay? As I said, T OSI is like conceptual model, okay? It's not, it's not the one that is using, but it's like the standard, okay? Because the standard come out after TCP IP was, was, uh, has been used, okay? So TCP IP was kind of a de facto standard, okay? It's not really a standard, but people use them. So if you compare OSI and TCP IP, OSI have seven layers. TCP have five layers. And the work of each layer is can compare in this um, picture, okay? This figure, you see that the physical layer is similar. The network access is kind of the data of TCP IP is kind of the, the data link with some of the network, okay? And the application of TCP IP is kind of cover like two and a half upper layers of OSI. This is the Okay, this is the um, applications um, transport internet network access uh, data link physically of TCP IP and this is what it application that it used okay for example uh, FTP is done in application layer like file transfer okay transport layer do the TCP have the TCP protocol UDP protocol use Okay, and internet IPv6, IPv4 is in the internet protocol. The network access and data link is um, like internet and Wi-Fi. Physical layer is like um, the media that we are using, okay? Like microwave, optical fiber, satellite, twisted pair. Okay. So um, this is the end of chapter one, okay? Um, we will continue on chapter two um, for the next tip. Okay, bye.